Hey everybody, good morning. What's up? Uh, My name is David and I get to be a pastor at this amazing church called Vertical. If you guys have been watching, you know that normally Pastor Ken is up here. But today he and Pastor Kathy are taking a little bit of time off. And so they gave me graciously uh, the opportunity to kind of just come spend a little bit of my heart and time with you guys this Sunday. So I hope you guys are ready. Hope you guys are locked in. Uh, I get to be the youth and young adult pastor here. So if you guys are looking to get connected, let me know after this. You can email me at davidb at verticalct.com. But without further ado, I just want to jump right into the message because I'm super excited about what God is saying, what God is doing in our church and our people. We have a big God who's opening big doors right now. We are seeing his faithfulness. We're seeing his greatness. And we are seeing the way that he shows up for his church when his church is looking and taking care of people who need him in this season. So I hope you guys are locked in. Uh, I'm a youth pastor, so this is going to be really simple. Uh, It's something you've probably heard before that maybe we're going to kind of revisit today, but that's okay because the Bible teaches us that the way we learn things is through repetition. That sometimes it's okay to hear something more than once until we make it a habit, until we make it something that is a part of our DNA, a part of who we are. And so I called this message today, Follow Unfollow. Follow unfollow. Now, maybe you are familiar with social media, maybe you're not, but if you're on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, TikTok, everything is kind of interesting because it gives you this ability to choose to follow something, a page, quote pages, whatever, and you can choose to say, okay, I want to see these types of things on my posts, on my feeds, and I don't want to see these types of things. And not only does it give you the ability to choose who you want to follow, but you can also choose the things that you don't want to follow. It's pretty cool. Like the other day, I opened up a Pinterest. Why I opened up a Pinterest? Mind your business. You don't need to know, but I opened up a Pinterest. And when I signed up, the first thing it did was say, what interests you? And I said, oh, you know, sports, fashion, uh, technology, cars, shopping, this type. And, and what it did was it took all the things that I said I was interested in seeing and it put it on my feet. And it let me see the things that I said I was interested in. Now, what's interesting is this. Have you ever, have you ever found yourself on social media at some point, maybe not, maybe you're watching the nightly news, maybe you're on TikTok, I don't know. Have you ever found yourself learning new information about something you had no idea what it was about, but as soon as you heard it, you reacted to it? I'll give you an example. I have, the other day, I was on, I'm not going to lie, I was on Instagram and I was scrolling through and somebody posted a post about penguins in some aquarium somewhere in the United States and how they were upset because the zoo, the aquarium keepers were not cleaning the penguins cages as often as they should. And because they weren't cleaning the penguins pages as often as they should, the penguins could possibly, none have been, none have gotten sick yet, but could possibly be sick. Now, This person didn't work at the aquarium. This person had no inside information about the cleaning hours or schedule of the aquarium, but they posted their stuff. They explained their point of view so elegantly, so nice, so dramatically that can I I be honest with y'all? I was laying in my bed at like 12 midnight in my pajamas, reading this post about penguins in another state in an aquarium that I have never heard of before, and I got upset. Like I legitimately got upset and I sent it to like three or four of my close friends to kind of talk about it. And I was like, can you believe this aquarium? These aquarium keepers, they take these penguins out of captivity. Mind you, a lot of them are taken and, and, and saved from different things or maybe they need an operation. They can't go back in the wild, so they keep whatever. And they are not cleaning their cages the way they should. I shared it. I, I was like this close to sending them a DM or a direct message or a private message to let them know that I was upset about the way that they were treating their penguins. You know what's crazy about that? I've never heard of this aquarium. 
I have no idea how they clean their cages. I have no idea whether their cages were clean or not. But what I do know is that what I was feeding on in that moment, what was portrayed to me, what I was paying attention to, what I was allowing to be the thing of my focus or the center of my focus caused an emotional reaction in me. It caused something in me that made me feel like I had to say something, do something, feel something, uh, interact with this post because of the way it made me feel. And I'll take it a step further, y'all. The other day, I was in a great mood. I was happy. I was relaxed. I went walking in the morning, so I felt like I was working on myself. I got some sleep. I had a good breakfast. It was great. I spent some time in my word, my devotional life. It was like, oh, this is so good. I just had an amazing, amazing mood. And then you know what happened? Someone came to me, and they shared something with me that wasn't my issue, wasn't my struggle, wasn't my fight, wasn't the thing that I should get worried about. I had to help them and pray for them. But because I love that person, I started to react to the information that they told me. Have you ever been there where like you're totally fine and then someone you love will come and tell you something about the way they feel or some wrong or injustice that was done to them. And then all of a sudden we get up in arms and we're like, that's not right. Who do they think they are? I'm going to say something to who do you, don't you talk to my niece like that. Don't you talk to my, don't you talk about my friend like that. And I got so upset, y'all. I got, and I thought about it. And I thought about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to say something. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to react to it. Because it's natural, right? It's human of us that the things that we begin to dwell on, the things we begin to focus on, the things we allow to consume our attention and our focus begin to cause natural reactions in us. And that's what I want to talk to us about today. I want to talk to us about this big idea. What you put in is what you get out. And I want to say to you, what, what, what is your focus? What things are you following that you need to unfollow? And what things are you, do you need to unfollow to start following something else? Because I'm going to tell you this, y'all. We have the power to feed ourselves, to pour into ourselves, to allow ourselves to be filled with things that will determine our thoughts, our moods, our actions, our reactions, In fact, the other day I was hanging out with someone. They happen to be a little bit older, which means they're full of wisdom and experience. And we were just sitting there having lunch, and they were on their phone. They were on their, you know, Facebook, you know. And as they were scrolling through stuff, they were laughing. And, oh, look at this. They were showing. We were both just laughing, having a good time. And you know what happened? They came across something on their feed that they didn't like. It's kind of inappropriate, something that probably, you know, not everybody appreciates. And in my, if it was me, I would just be like, ah, I don't want to see that, and I'd scroll up. And the person said something to me that I will never forget. They said, you know what? I'm going to unfollow them. And in my culture, my idea, unfollowing somebody is something you only do when it's like the worst of the worst. Unfollowing is like childish. So if I unfollowed you, it's because we were in a relationship and had a breakup. You hurt me, you cheated on me, you talked about me. Unfollowing is the biggest source of like, you're out of my life, you're ousted, you don't get to see who I am anymore. But this person said, you know what? I'm gonna unfollow them. And I was like, why? And they said this and it rocked my word. I feel like the Holy Spirit breathed on what they said. They said, because I do not have time to focus and look at negativity in my life. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because they demonstrated to me a characteristic, a lifestyle habit that I feel like God sometimes calls us to, but oftentimes we don't step up to the plate with. And it's as simple as understanding that there are things in our life Things that we give too much energy to, things that we give too much attention to, things that we give too much of our time to, things that we give too much of our, ourselves to that are not helping us grow, that are not helping us be like Christ, that are not helping us become more and more into the image of the sun, but causing us to stay stuck and stagnant in habits and characteristics and behaviors and attitudes and frustrations and anger and resentment that God has been trying to call us out from since we came to know him as our savior. In fact, man, I thought about it this way. What things in my life 
do I need to begin to unfollow? Whether it be an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend's page on social media. Whether it be a text message or a phone number in my phone book that I should have deleted a long time ago that I haven't done so. Whether it be that news channel or that Facebook news channel that every time I watch it, I get upset about a political party. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's things on Instagram that when I see these pictures, it stirs up some affections in me that are not godlike that I need to just delete and not look at altogether. And often what happens is because we feel like when we unfollow something, when we turn something or someone off, that it is a total pushing them out of our life, what happens is we will begin to allow things to stay in our life that are keeping us in routines and habits stagnant and stuck because we're afraid that in doing so we'll hurt someone else. And can I tell you that you have every right. If something is hurting you, if something is not pushing you towards growth, if something is not pushing you towards where God is calling you to be, you have every right respectfully and with love, in love, to say, you know what? I'm just not here for it anymore. You do you, I'm going to do me. I'm going to focus on the things that God is calling us to focus on. Phone numbers that shouldn't be there. Shows. And hear me, me, here's my heart right now. I'm going to say this before I go further. This is not a legalistic message. This is not me telling you to go through your social media and go through your phone and go through your, your movies and your shows and delete stuff that is rated R or delete stuff that is not spiritual. I'm not telling you to go through your life and deal with like secular music and get, no. But I am saying there are certain things that we give our energy to, certain things that cause things in us, habits in us to form that are not Christ-like that yes, we need to remove. And maybe it looks like uh, watching a certain movie or following a certain person on Instagram. Maybe if like, listen, if you're following of somebody that you know kind of sort of as an acquaintance and every time they post them and their brand new Range Rover they got, it causes jealousy in you, then maybe it's a good idea, not because you don't love them and not because you don't like them, but for your own spiritual sake and for you to kind of keep your communion with the Father and making sure that you're not stumbling, it may be a good idea just to hit the unfollow button. You know what I'm saying? Like it may be a good idea just to remove yourself from situations that cause you to stumble. Not because you're afraid of stumbling, but because wisdom would tell you that if the fire hurts when I touch it, baby, don't touch it anymore. (laughs) Like my little niece the other day, she went to do something and I was like, don't do it. And she was like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, don't do it. And she was like, I'm going to do it. I was like, girl, don't do it. And she did it, and then she cried, and and, and, because she's in pain. And you know what happens is often I feel like sometimes heaven is yelling at us, don't look at it, don't do it, don't engage in the conversation, don't talk about stuff you don't need to, don't do it. And then we do it, and we start feeling certain types of way, all types of frustrations, all types of aggravation, all types of, of, of spiritual stuckness. And then we go, what, why do I feel this way? Because what you put in is what you'll get out. What you're putting in yourself, what you're putting in front of you is what you get out. And so the thing is this. Often, what we refuse to unfollow can make our spiritual walk hollow. The thing that we refuse to get rid of that keeps causing us to move down or to be hypocritical or to stumble in our walk can often make our walk ineffective. But that's not God's best. And if you're in that place today, just like I am, we're all in that place. I'm in that place. If you're there, that's okay. Because the beauty of the gospel and the grace of Jesus is that God will call us time and time again in the middle of our mess, lift us up and give us the courage and the encouragement to walk on out of that thing. And I pray this morning that all of us find something in our life that we can get rid of on file that is not helping us grow to be more and more like Jesus. So check this out. My question is, what have you been putting in lately? How have you been filling yourself lately? Uh, man, one of the, often the things that we pay attention to become the sources of our lives. They feed us, they nourish us, they guide us. For example, I've been saying this for a while. I can say that I want to be skinny all I want. 
But if all I do is keep eating unhealthy foods, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to stay in a place of being overweight, right? Because it's not enough to just say the things that you want. You have to be willing to cause your life to come into alignment with the habit and the lifestyle you want. You have to begin to move things out of the way and add new things into your life so that you can begin to reflect the lifestyle that you want to live. I can say that I want a nice car or a nice house, but if I'm not living my life with boundaries and not having too many spending habits where I'm spending tons of money or doing things in that way, then I won't ever get there. In fact, can I, can I tattle tell on myself a little bit? The other day, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and man, I, it was bad. This is bad. I was laying in my, in my bed again in my pajamas just because that's my, that's my sanctuary. And on the TV, I was watching TV, and man, as I was sitting there, a Burger King commercial came on. And you guys know the Burger King commercials I'm talking about, right? The one where that, like, that crazy guitar music is in the back, and then all of a sudden you see a big flame and this whopper comes flipping in the air and then smacks on the grill. And you hear that beautiful, that anointed, that godly tss, as the burger starts to let out its grease. And they were like, whoppers, two for six at Burger King right now. Can I tell you for 10 minutes, all I thought about was that whopper. And I thought about getting that whopper, getting out of my bed, getting dressed, getting in my car, and driving to the nearest Burger King to get that Whopper. And can I be even more honest? After about 10 minutes of thinking about it, I went on my phone, I Googled nearest Burger King, they were open till midnight, I went out and I got my Whopper. It's crazy, but even society, even business people know that if all I can do is dangle something in front of you and get you to focus on it, get you to pay attention to it, soon enough you will begin to react on the thing that you're focusing on, man. And it is what it is, honestly, is the law of sowing and reaping. The things that we put into ourselves, and often we use this when we talk about money, right? And if you give to God, God will give to you. And that's cool, but I see it as this way. Anything that we're giving our focus and our attention to that is not watched carefully under the word of God is a seed. And these seeds will begin to grow in us sooner or later and form desires and habits in us sooner or later. Jesus said that the heart of man is like what? It's like a soil. It's like dirt, it's like ground, that what you plant there sooner or later will, blood, will bud and come up. And can I just say that oftentimes I can be mistaken because I often think I'm planting seeds, but in reality, I'm letting weeds grow. Sometimes I'm looking for fruit and I get weeds. What are you talking about, Pastor Dave? What are the weeds? The stuff I was mentioning earlier, the struggle, the frustration, the anger, the resentment, the things that shouldn't be growing in my heart grow often because I keep giving attention to those things. Hear me, attention is like watering the seed. Attention is like giving energy to that thing. And sooner or later, baby, that thing's gonna grow. It's gonna burst out. If you don't believe me, look at this. Uh, in Galatians chapter six, Paul speaking to them. He's talking about many things. He's, at this point, he's talking to the church about not letting people bring them into a bondage of don't touch and don't do and, and trying to move away from the gospel of Jesus and to other things. And he says this, and I love it. He says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. I love this. It's our key for the day. You will always, always harvest what you plant. You will always harvest what you plant. Next verse. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Next verse. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Next verse. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do what? Good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. In other words, y'all, it can be tiring and exhausting to change and work 
in the soil of your heart. It can be sometimes a nuisance, sometimes annoying when things are presented to you that may cause you to stumble for you to say, you know what, I know everybody else is doing this, but I'm going to focus on what God has called me to here. Right? When people bring things to you that maybe are not helping you, it's, it's, it's hard to be like, you know what, I'm going to focus on what God's called me to and not on this. But Paul says, don't get tired in doing what is good and giving yourself to things of God because if we do that, we will reap a harvest of fruit. We will reap a harvest of seeing our walks in Christ be effective, be powerful, and be life-changing if we give ourselves to that and not to things that hurt us. You will always harvest what you plant. If we're not careful, we will allow weeds to grow. When weeds grow, they can be destructive, disruptive, and divisive. Destructive, disruptive, and divisive. In fact, you may be listening to me and being like, nope, not me. I don't, I don't do that. But you know what? We do. We do. In fact, the most spiritual person I think in the Bible next to Jesus, being Paul the Apostle who's writing this letter, even he had no time to mess with stuff that wasn't worthy of his attention. In fact, in this argument, he gets so upset that they're talking about things that are not helping them grow, that are not advancing the gospel, pushing the gospel forward, that a couple verses after this, look what he tells them. Go ahead to verse 15. He says, it doesn't matter. He's frustrated here. It doesn't even matter whether we've been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we've been transformed into a new... In other words, get your mind off of the arguments and the pointless debates and focus on what matters. What matters is that we have been transformed into a new creation. Next verse. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. What principle? You get out what you put in. They are the new people of God. Next verse. And then I love this one. You ready? He says, from now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things. Can you imagine Paul saying, listen, I'm done with it. I don't want to hear about it. Don't even talk. Can I, can I say something forward real quick? This is something I believe we all need to do from time to time. You know what Paul just did? He unfollowed. He unsubscribed. He was like, I'm done. No more. Don't bother me. The, there's an anointing. And I'm going to say this <laughs> with grace for us right now to look at what's going on culturally. Though we need to be involved in some of this, some of this stuff is just hearsay. Some of this stuff is just aggravating stuff. Some of this stuff is just further pushing the envelope to be div divisive, destructive, and what? disruptive. And you know what we need to do? We need to be like Paul right now and be like, you know what? Not only for things in the gospel, but for things in our world that are causing us to be divided, I'm done. I don't want to hear it. Office gossip that comes in that causes you to, I'm done. I don't want to, you know, people with family situations. My mother, I love her, but she calls me every day sometimes to tell me what my family's doing that made her upset. And sometimes I just got to be like Paul and be like, I'm done. I don't want to hear, don't bother me with it anymore because it's causing me to want to react and be frustrated to this stuff. And I don't want to live my Christianity that way. Paul was over it. He unfollowed, he was done. And you should be too. And I want to talk about this and I'm almost done. I want to give you three things that you can unfollow easily in your life because I want to make this practical. Three quick tips to help you Grow in your walk and stop giving your energy to things that you don't need to give your energy to. You ready? Tip number one. Un unfollow tip number one. You ready? Let's look it up. Unfollow it when it leads to sin and temptation. This is huge. This is a big one. If the thing that you're following, the thought, the person, the thing, you're wh whatever, if it's causing you to be tempted to sin or to sin, it's time to cut it off. In fact, Matthew 5, look what it says. Jesus speaking. He says, and if your hand, even your stronger hand or your right hand, causes you to sin, not literally, relax, don't go, I don't want to hear like, Pastor Dave, I cut my heart, that's weird. You know, but if it causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. In other words, it's very strong, you know, symbolic language to say, if it's hurting your walk, 
If it's pulling your attention away from Jesus, if it's not furthering your growth in the gospel, if it's not loving and helping people, if it's not thinking about what is good and gracious, guess what you have permission to do? Cut it off. Unfollow. Unsubscribe. I don't want to know about it. And not that we're going to be ignorant about everything because there are some issues that we need to get into and get involved with. But there are things that do not help us become more like Jesus. And God's cause, listen, if it's causing you to stumble, cut it out. Uncle Jesse, was it Full House? Cut it out. Like, it's done. It needs to go. Not with aggression. Don't be mean to people, but just, I'm just going to put some distance between this thing. Unfollow tip number two. You ready? Unfollow it when it leads to anger and resentment. When it leads to anger. This one is huge. I just mentioned my mom a couple of seconds ago. She used to do this. But often, family or close friends can be the biggest perpetrators. Meaning well, people want to vent to you, ask you for advice, tell you the crazy thing that happened. But if you know for yourself that you're not in a healthy place to handle that thing, give advice, and remove yourself from the situation, then guess what, baby? It's got to go. It's got to go. And you need to have enough self-respect and desire to grow in your walk to tell people, I love you. I, 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 you matter to me. What you're saying matters to me. Your emotions matter to me. But what you're telling me is not helping me. I'm struggling to pick this up. I, I, I don't know if I can listen. Here's somebody else you could talk to where you can let that out in a healthy way, but I'm not the one. And I struggle with this because I love people. And sometimes I just want to, I want to, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a server. You know, I just want to help people and tell me whatever. But uh, a man here at this church, I love him, Elder Ed, one time he's preaching in the youth ministry. And he said something that changed my life. He said, Pastor David, as he's preaching, he was like, people don't realize that we are people, not trash cans. Stop letting people dump their junk and their garbage into you. And it changed my life. To this understanding of like, you know what? I wasn't made to carry junk. I'm here to give advice and I'm here to help. And I'm here to, to, to love people and pray for people in the midst of the struggle. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But there's some stuff that we just need to cut off. There's some stuff that we just need to ignore. There's some stuff we just need to, you know what? That's on you. And focus on what God is calling us to do. Last tip. Ready? Unfollow tip number three. Unfollow it when it leads you nowhere. I love this one because especially with social media, if you ever notice, go to the comment section of every video, any video. All it is is a bunch of people who are so insecure that they find their security in having an opinion and they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, forth. and can I tell you that if we're not careful, we can get so caught up in the debate that it'll never end. In questions and thoughts and ideas and things that we will never have answers to, that we can never change. That we will continue fighting about things that are not helping us grow. In fact, there's a verse in the Bible, I believe it's in Titus, if I'm not mistaken, where Paul or, you know, whatever, literally, I believe it's Paul, I just lost my train of thought, speaks to the church. He says, listen, don't get caught up in arguing about genealogies and fables and stories. And he said, she, it's not worth it because you will find yourself frustrated, angry, and lost in a whole bunch of stuff that is out of your control that you cannot deal with, that you can't change. Be informed. Stand up for what you believe in, but never let it get to a point where you feel like you can't grow you're in a place of unrest. You're not, you're not becoming more like Christ. Don't let it bog you down and drag you below. If it's not causing Christ-likeness, it has to go. It has to go. Because you know what, y'all? Some people just like to argue. Some people, they just love to stir stuff up, sit back, and just watch it go down. Some people just love to walk by and tell you some stuff. And I'll never forget high school. High school was crazy because one time I had a guy come up to me like, you know, so-and-so in, in, in class 7B? Yeah, what about him? He said, you're ugly. And he said he don't like you. He said if he had the chance, he could beat you up. 
At that point, I was saved. And I was like, okay, dude, that's cool. I watched that same person go to someone else and tell them the same exact story verbatim about them and watch those two people get into a fight after school. Why? Because that person just looking to stir stuff up, looking to stir controversy, looking to stir things up. And you know what? That is not what God has called us to. And we have every right to pull back. And if you don't think I'm telling you the truth, Jesus did this. You want to know how and when? I'll tell you right now. Look at this in John 14, 30 to 31. Jesus did this. I love this. Jesus said, I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this word approaches. He has no power over me. I love this next verse. Look at this. But I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. In other words, you know what? I'm not placing myself in places in front of things and giving my attention and energy to things that I'm not called to right now. He says, I have nothing to do with this dude right now, but I'm going to keep doing what God is calling me to do. And I think that's the tension of this message today. Say, you know what? There's stuff that is not helping my walk right now. There's stuff that, you know, has no part in me. God says in his word, what, what, what <laughs> unity has light and darkness bailing? Like this stuff is my past has got to go. And I'm going to keep pushing on to what God is calling me to because this is growth and this changes people and this helps people. And this makes me become who God has called me to be so that I can continue serving and loving the people around me. And then Jesus did it again in Mark 8. I love this. Check this out, Mark 8. Jesus goes, you ready? And now, dear brothers and sisters, oh, this is Philippians. Okay, take that off. That's my fault. I didn't send you this verse. Look at this. It says, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and started to argue with him. They tested him. They demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. And when he heard this, Jesus speaking, says he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why do these people keep demanding a sign? I tell you the truth, I will give, not give this generation a sign. So he got back into the boat, he left them, and they crossed the other side of the lake. And sometimes, y'all, get in your boat and bounce. Deuces, love you, see you later. Catch me outside, I, I, got, I got nothing for it. And I'm in this point in my life where I feel like, you know what, God is kind of stirring me a little bit to say, you know what? I'm going to do me. I'm going to love the Lord. I'm going to love the people around me to the best of my ability. I'm going to serve my local church. I'm going to walk in community. I'm going to serve my leaders here, my, my fellow leaders here, the people of this church. And I'm going to keep growing on what God has called me to do. And I'm not going to keep letting myself be dragged into stuff that is not helping me grow. And call it a day. It's my last point. This message isn't just the do, don't do, do, don't do. But it's a call that we would not just unfollow, but that we would follow. In fact, look at this verse, and I'm done right now, in Philippians 4, 8, where God is speaking. And he says this, and now, dear brothers and sisters, I love this. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. What does he say? Fix your thoughts on what is what? True and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. He doesn't say these things were just coming to your set head. He says you think about things that are lovely, admirable, pure, kind, that will help you be like Christ. Focus your attention on those things. Be intentional about following the things that are causing you to grow and be more and more like Jesus, that we would chase things that cause us to be more like God. And I pray today that this helps us. I pray today, not that I've attained this, because if I'd be a hypocrite if I said to you that I'm doing this stuff all the time, because I'm not. But I know one thing, that daily I'm trying to be more like Jesus. That daily I'm trying to look at myself and say, Dave, what things do you need to lay down today? What things do you need to get rid of today? What things do you need to focus on? today.